It always feels good when you are appreciated. SLT Non-Stop Broadband. Free loyalty data added as you stay connected. Link at the time of the day, you will be able to get the money. Mom, what? Let's take a look. Tonight, pandemic panic. Authorities say still no confirmation of suspected local cases as government awaits Chinese clearance for charter flight to bring Sri Lankan students in Wuhan back home. Time for a change. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa says that the contents revealed through the Ranjan Ramanayaka audio recordings fiasco are a clear indication of the degradation of society and the quality of its public representatives. A cleaner future. Qatari Clean Energy Minister meets with President Gotabe Rajapaksa and promises his government's fullest support for countries switch to renewable energy. Disaster strikes. Earthquake in Turkey claims the lives of 29 and brings down 30 public buildings as rescue efforts continue to free the trapped victims. All this and much more coming up on this Sunday, the 26th of January 2020. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana First at Nine. PC Nicking Cut Winner, Anti Jerm Mouthwash Summering and a Close Up Gel Lekka Story Eka Start Karanna. Hi. Hi. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Shanella Fernando. In your top stories for tonight, the world is now ramping up containment methods as the ability of the coronavirus to spread gets stronger. In news at home, the four individuals admitted to the infectious diseases hospital following suspicion of contracting the virus are yet to test positive. While the global search for a cure continues, reports emerge that HIV drugs are being cited as part of the treatment plan for the deadly virus in Wuhan by Chinese medical authorities. Meanwhile, questions over effective measures to detect possible carriers of the virus have arisen following a WHO consultant stating that broader test screenings used at airports had proven ineffective during the outbreak of the deadly SARS virus in 2002 and in 2003. With the coronavirus outbreak showing no signs of abating, Chinese authorities have resorted to some extreme measures, namely lockdowns in at least 10 cities so far. In such a backdrop, President Gotabe Rajapaksa issued directives to evacuate all Sri Lankan students living in China via a special charter flight. With the President's decision, we at first at nine contacted the Sri Lankan embassy in China for an update on the current situation. The Wuhan city is locked down. There is no exit or entering to Wuhan by the Hubei provincial government. As per the instruction of the Ministry of Foreign Relations, the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Beijing made arrangement to evacuate the Sri Lankan students and their family members as soon as possible from the Wuhan city. We have requested the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Beijing as well as the Foreign Affairs Office in the Hubei province to allow us to bring the Sri Lankan airline aircraft to land in Wuhan city and take them back to Sri Lanka. In this regard, we have sought the approval of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China and we are waiting for a response and I hope we will be able to get the response either today or tomorrow because there are certain procedures that they have to go through. As soon as we get the approval and clearance, we will be able to do that. And with regard to the Sri Lankan students who are staying outside Wuhan city, we are also trying to facilitate their return uh, to Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, due to the city of Wuhan being in a state of isolation, Sri Lankans living in the city are being faced with a food crisis. Other than a received footage of Sri Lankans and Chinese nationals living in the city of Guangzhou, donating food items to Sri Lankans in Wuhan, with the coordination of the country's military personnel. Meanwhile, reports of two women suspected to have contracted the coronavirus being admitted to the infectious diseases hospital in Colombo yesterday has sent fear and uncertainty spiking throughout the country. 
The number of admissions increased today with two more being admitted on suspicion of the virus. However, no confirmation has been available as yet on whether the patients are carrying the virus or not. In developments overseas, Canada becomes the newest addition to the countries dealing with the deadly virus, confirming its first presumptive coronavirus case in Toronto. Australia, Malaysia, Nepal, Hong Kong, Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Macau and the United States as well as France have all confirmed positive cases so far. Media reports emerge that China is now using HIV drugs as a stopgap treatment for the virulent pneumonia caused by the coronavirus as the global search for a cure continues. The Chinese government today announced the banning of all sales of wild animals throughout the country as the number of deadly coronavirus cases continues to rise. The suspected source of outbreak is a market in the city that was selling seafood and live animals, including wild species. The U.S. Embassy in China, meanwhile, is making arrangements to relocate consular staff in Wuhan. As part of its preventive measures, Taiwan has suspended visa applications for all Chinese nationals and has banned entry for Chinese nationals from Hubei province, which remains ground zero for the outbreak. Taiwan's Center for Disease Control and Prevention said in a statement today that applications of Chinese citizens from Chinese provinces other than Hubei on account of tourism, social exchanges, professional exchanges, aesthetic medical checkups will be temporarily suspended. However, with many countries commencing the screening of travelers at airports to detect possible carriers of the deadly virus, WHO consultant Dr. Alexandra Phelan says the method was proven ineffective during the SARS outbreak. Generally, border screenings uh, through, through just symptoms like that doesn't pick people up during the SARS outbreak. It was not very effective during past flu outbreaks, uh, pandemic flu. Uh, it has not been uh, necessarily very effective. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has issued a series of standard recommendations for the general public to follow in order to reduce exposure to and transmission of a range of illnesses, including the novel coronavirus. They include hand and respiratory hygiene and safe food practices. In its guide, the World Health Organization recommends frequent cleaning of hands by using alcohol-based hand rub or simply soap and water. It advises the public to cover their mouths and noses when coughing and sneezing with a flexed elbow or a tissue while recommending that the tissue be discarded in a closed bin immediately, followed by the immediate washing of hands. It also advises people to avoid close contact with anyone who has fever and cough and if you have fever, cough and difficulty of breathing, seek medical care as early as possible and share your previous travel history with your health care provider. When visiting live markets in areas currently experiencing case of novel coronavirus, avoid direct unprotected contact with live animals and surfaces in contact with animals. The WHO recommends the avoiding of consumption of raw or undercooked animal products. Raw meat, milk or animal organs should be handled with care to avoid cross-contamination with uncooked foods. The organization also recommends to avoid travel if you are down with fever or cough. If you become sick while traveling, the guide recommends that you seek medical advice as early as possible. Qatar's Minister of Clean Energy, Saad Sharida al Khabi met with President Gotabe Rajapaksa today and pledged that Sri Lanka would receive the fullest support from the government of Qatar to produce renewable energy within the country. During the meeting, President Gotabe Rajapaksa expressed hope in furthering of bilateral cooperation among the two countries. Qatar's Minister of Energy, Saad Sharida al Khabi met with President Gotabe Rajapaksa earlier today at the Presidential Secretariat and iterated the willingness of the government of Qatar to help Sri Lanka begin the production of renewable energy. Minister al Khabi requested that the President appoint a representative of Sri Lanka to look into the matters pertaining to renewable energy production and also congratulated the President on his victory at last year's presidential election. During the meeting, President Rajapaksa nominated Secretary to the President P.B. Jayasundara as the country's representative on the issue. 
In order to explore methods of implementation of the proposal, the Minister of Qatar, Saad Sharida al Kabi invited the Secretary to the President to visit the city of Doha in Qatar. President Gotabir Rajapaksa said that Sri Lanka is willing to expand bilateral cooperation between the two countries and said that Sri Lanka is in need of extending its market for exports such as tea, both organic and non-organic vegetables and fruits. Expressing optimism over the discussions, the Qatari minister stated that it was the first step in furthering cooperation between the two countries. In one of your headline-making news, in the backdrop of the continuing Ranjan Ramanayaka audio recording fiasco, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa says that the saga is an indication of the deterioration of the country's social values and the quality of its public representatives. He made these comments when he addressed an award ceremony in Matugama. An award ceremony organized in commemoration of former Minister Dayadi Pasquale worked off at the Division Secretariat premises in Matugama under the patronage of Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa. Meanwhile, President Gotabe Rajapaksa, Prime Minister Mind Rajapaksa and Minister Chamal Rajapaksa participated in an alms giving held this morning to celebrate the birth anniversary of the chief incumbent of the Abhay Rama Temple in Narayampita, Venerable Murutatwe Ananda Thera. Meanwhile, a cultural event named the Divine Quartet, organized by the Indian High Commission in Sri Lanka in celebration of the 71st Republic Day of India, worked off last evening at the BMICH under the patronage of Prime Minister Mind Rajapaksa, Madam Shiranti Rajapaksa, and Indian High Commissioner of Sri Lanka, His Excellency Taranjit Singh Sandhu. The event featured legendary Grammy Award winner Mohan Veena, instrumentalist Padma Shri Pandit Vishwa Mohan Bhatt, Grammy Award nominee Tabla Maestro Pandit Subhain Chatterjee, Slide guitarist Sri Salil Bhatt and drummer Sri Sambit Chatterjee. Addressing the event, High Commissioner Taranjit Singh Sandhu said that he was blessed with exceptional friendships during his tenures and reiterated his government's continued friendship and assistance. As I conclude my term here as High Commissioner of India to Sri Lanka, I find myself not thinking about how much I could contribute to this historical relationship, but how much Sri Lanka has contributed to my life. In the seven years of my life that I've spent in Colombo, I've been blessed with exceptional friendships, including that of Honorable Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha and his family. I met him first time in the year 2000. He was the fisheries minister. I've been mesmerized by the beauty of Sri Lanka, the warmth of his people, the strength and the pride they carry in their hearts. My experiences and my interactions here have enriched my life immensely and I will miss dearly the dear friends that I will be leaving behind. In conclusion, I would like to say friends, India and Sri Lanka are neighbors by destiny, friends by choice and family by blood. Our history and our ties are deep and our future holds bright promises. In this journey, Sri Lanka will always find India by its side in rain and in shine, you will always be able to count on us. Following the release of the controversial bond scam forensic audit report for perusal by parliamentarians, politicians from various factions were seen weighing in on the recent tabling of the forensic audit report on the central bank bond scam. <laughs>
Now, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa hosted a public event today for former provincial councillors, electoral organisers, at a public rally conducted under the theme of Think New and Rise. He urged his supporters to move forward despite the party's setbacks, where all can speak with open minds according to their consciences. Saji Pravas Matubage, Nagotia, how she went up? Is Sandana Tule, except Jadi Paksani Varti and Don? Api, Ijav Nagata and Katagaran, Ubalakataran, Tirikan, Ape Nagatuma, except Jadi Pakshe, Mamalajana to Ekiana, Mame Tumagan, Anda Vatila Kibota, Kilua, Gamba District, Kayan, Laksadahata, Chandina District, May District, Vadakaran, May District, and Chanda, but Nakamatiana, Tatapaka Dakarena. Tuma Digo appeared a million at Sipan Haddama, Digo appeared a million at Sipan Haddala Monakaran. What a relaunch to Kanabona then? The last Dahana may Tuma, Utur Nagan a billion had a Tuna Dama, billion had a Tuma, Eka Ruth, the King Vedankar and Buluan, Kalamanakarne, Danavanang, Budimatnang, Eva Abo the Vendone, Vedia Majandi and the Sikh Walter, Audu Hatar Hamarat and Billion of the Hakka Damina, Sali Dunaki water, Janata, Vinatang, Chanda Tientang, Koheda Gila Terunga, Tadua, Nevada Karena. It amatar wabi karo visal yang warga tamai badung karya kena. Eka ingapi nanti lagi ya. Ung horagang karya lagi lah kiu ata. Api horagang karbu a wehen ni na. Namut api horagang karbu eka. Apa de pelikan ni wenawa. Idiri de anu na naya ke tu ma. Horu nato idiri de gamana kya nabo tu ma lastuin. Horu tek apa de nata gamana kya nabe. Api paksa loko tu engal huak kah hitia. Raja paksa la tek deal dana. Raja paksa la ek deal dana ung. Me paksa engani wari ngain karan done. Obat tu ma de gamana kya non nang. Nata obat tu ma tatu gaya bila ya na. Parliament to Bahutre Labaganima Yape Gamana, Eat Nayakate Shakti Labadinata, Apilasti, Kineka, Mevasta, the Pahadilum Prakashaka. Hamatanakinma, a Rau Pilirau, then Anduna Mukad, I Gamatinwan and Nagaratin on Venezuela in Natona, Vera the Hadagan in Natona, Devan the Balapuru to Akratapura Vatamativ, Apikissima Davasaka, Kadin in a Habedin in a Habei. Ape Ekamutua did an Ekamutua. Prativadi neck a deal the Halatika and Nekamutua Penine. Sada Halika, Pasuba, Maxiduna, Parajak Siduna. Namut Api Equi did it. May Pakshe, Kissima Pugalekato, Kanda Makata, Sinakarop and Dila Dila and Ateki and Eka, Mamme Vastaviki and Atakamati. Praja Tantravadi, Katheater, E. Government of Balagi, Kamat the Palakarandi, Hila to Salama Ili Makaran. And Silu Denama, Kamati. And I may allude dominant to Akamatika Rutino. May Siduin and Tamunan sell at a part of Makigan and the Puluang, Ming Idriata, Ekeka Kali Kanda and Sekarala, Aratu Supukali, Tamunan sell at a Nidaswa, her the Saksi at Ekanova, Katakar and the Puluang Yuga, Apiada Davas in the Laram Bakara. The Parliament's Constitutional Council has summoned Attorney General Dapula de Oliveira to appear before Speaker Karujai Surya for an inquiry into the Attorney General's directive last week to seek the arrest of High Court Judge Gihan Pilipitia for his role in the controversial Ranjan Ramanayaka audio recordings. At a discussion held in this regard, the Council had concluded that the Attorney General's decision was likely to undermine public confidence in the judiciary and had discussed the impact of such directives on the independence of the judiciary system and the professional dignity of judges. In addition, the arrest of MPs on the directive of the Attorney General as well as the arrest of the IGP and the former Defence Secretary had also gained the attention of the Constitutional Council members as well. The Constitutional Council meeting chaired by Speaker of Parliament Karu Jai Surya on Friday evening was conducted in the presence of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, Opposition Leader Sajid Premadasa, TNA Leader R. Sambandan, State Minister Mahinda Samarasingha, UNP MP Talata Atukurala, and civil society representatives as well as attorneys at law Javid Yusuf and N. Selva Kumaran. The Chief of Naval Staff of the Pakistani Navy, Admiral Zafar Mahmood, arrived in the country yesterday on an official five-day visit at the invitation of Navy Commander Vice Admiral Pial de Silva. During his visit, Admiral Mahmood is expected to hold discussions with the Commander of the Navy, Admiral Pial de Silva.
the Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva, Air Force Commander Air Force Marshal, Air Marshal rather Sumangala Dias, and Defense Secretary Retired Major General Kamal Gunaratna. Further than Pakistani Navy Chief is scheduled to take part in several other events before concluding his formal Sri Lankan tour on the 29th of this month. More news on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We are at first at nine. In your business news, according to the Sri Lankan Apparel Exporters Association, the country's apparel industry earned $250 million more than last year and will look to target a 6% year-on-year growth in exports for this year. This growth is significant as the apparel industry is the only sector to record a positive growth last year, contributing to 6% of Sri Lanka's GDP while accounting for 40% of the country's exports. This will surpass the earnings in 2000. 2019 of $5.3 billion with a 5.1% year-on-year high for apparel export earnings. The association also expects to receive wider benefits from the GSP Plus facility as the industry is looking at the possibility of sourcing fabric from Indonesia and Bangladesh in addition to the present sourcing countries such as India and Pakistan. This keeps up with the plans to set up a 200-acre fabric park with foreign investments in collaboration with the Board of investment in the eastern province. The fabric park is expected to be fully operational within two years. Now, Sri Lanka stocks gained 0.11% at close last Friday with a market turnover of 492.72 million rupees. During the week, the banking sector recorded the highest sector turnover while the capital goods sector recorded the second highest. In the week ahead, analysts expect the stock market to show a positive momentum on the expectation of companies registering recoveries in most of the counters. Further, it is expected that market activity will remain moderate in the upcoming week from tomorrow, with foreigners expected to be continued in the selling side. International and sports news is on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back in your international news, one of the headline making news. At least 29 people have been killed and 1,000 more injured after a 6.8 magnitude earthquake hit eastern Turkey on Friday. Sivrish, a town in the Alazig province about 550 kilometers from the capital of Ankara, was the epicenter of the quake with tremors, causing nearly 30 buildings to collapse. According to Turkey's Disaster and Emergency Authority, there were more than 401 aftershocks recorded after the initial quake, with 14 of them having magnitude magnitudes as big as 4.0. Tremors were also felt in the neighboring countries of Syria, Lebanon and Iran. Officials said that around 400 rescue teams are heading towards the region. 44 people had been rescued with more than 20 feared still trapped. Meanwhile, emergency workers managed to rescue a five-year-old girl found alive after being trapped under the collapsed building. According to officials, the child and her mother were rescued alive and unharmed. Meanwhile, Turkish President Tayyip Recep Tayyip Erdogan visited the disaster site to inspect the rescue efforts that were underway. With barely a week to go until the state's voters head to the caucuses uh, to nominate a candidate for the November presidential election. A new poll shows that Bernie Sanders has surged ahead of his Democratic rivals in Iowa. The poll found that Sanders has grabbed an increase of six points from a similar poll taken in October last year. With this, Sanders is now the first choice of 25% of the voters in the state of Iowa. Sanders' gains come 
at the expense of his fellow Senator Elizabeth Warren of the Massachusetts, whose support dropped to 15% from 22% in the October polls. The Iowa, which takes place on 3rd February, represents the first formal election air test for the 13 Democrats in the race who are seeking to challenge President Donald Trump for the White House. Trump is accused by the Democrat-controlled House of Charges relating to abuse of power and obstruction of Congress in relation to the leaked phone calls between himself and Ukrainian officials where he urges investigations to be commenced into former Vice President Joe Biden. In your sports news, women's world number one Ashley Barty celebrated Australia Day with a win over American Alison Risquet, making her way into the quarterfinals of the Australian Open. Meanwhile, the defending men's champion Novak Djokovic is also through to the quarterfinals after beating Diego Schwartzman in straight sets. Let's take a look at all the action starting from today. Home favourite and women's world number one Ashley Barty is through to the Australian Open quarterfinals for the second year in a row with a comeback win defeating Alison Risk of the United States 6-3-1-6-6-4. Coco Gauss bid for history at the Australian Open ended in tears today as the 15-year-old crashed out in three sets to fellow American Sofia Kenin. The 14-seeded Kenin recovered from a set down to win convincingly 6-7, 6-3, 6-0. Meanwhile, Tunisian Ons Jaber defeated China's Wang Kiang 7-6, 6-1 to become the first Arab woman to make a Grand Slam quarter-final. Number 7 seed Petra Kvitova avoided a major upset coming back from a set down against an inspired Maria Sakkari 6-7, 6-3, 6-2 to book her spot in the Australian Open quarter-finals. Well, with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining. I'm Chanela Fernando. Good night.